Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Blessed be your name. Glory and honor to your name. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We worship you. Thank you, keeper of Israel. Thank you, lover of our soul. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our great helper. Thank you, the Lord of all lords, the prince above all princes, our God of truth, our God of love, our God of mercy, our God of great grace. We honor you, we adore you, we praise you forever and ever. You deserve the highest praise. What a mighty God we serve. What a great rewarder. What a great keeper. What a great shepherd. What a great deliverer. What a great provider. What a great healer, merciful God, you deserve the highest praise. We say, blessed be your name forever in the mighty name of Jesus. Child of God, our God is good all the time. Everything he tells us is good. Everything he does is good. The God that loves us so much that is doing everything for us to spend eternity with him. Beloved child of God, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, it says, Dear, thought John, verse 3, it says, Dear friend, I hope all is well with you and that you are healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. What a mighty God. Beloved, are you receiving the greetings of our Father? To you and me this morning, the Lord is saying, dear friend, I hope all is well with you. That's the heart of the Father. His desire is that all be well with us. His love and his mercies, his commandments, his directions, his instructions, is just because he wants it to be well with us. It's not because he wants us to be full of stress. No, that is not the will of the Father. It's not because he's a tax master. No, he's a loving God. The God that knows the consequences of disobedience always calls us to obedience so that we don't suffer the consequences of disobedience. That's why he keeps calling us, instructing us, directing us to do his perfect will because he knows the benefits of obedience. He knows the reward of obedience and the will of the Father is that me and you will enjoy the rewards of obedience. And so, child of God, we serve a God that loves us so much. We serve a God that cares so much about us, that all is well with us. His will is that we prosper, we be in good health, and that our soul be healthy. That's the will of the Father. My prayer this morning is that His will alone will stand concerning our lives, in spirit, in soul, and in body. What a mighty God we serve. Child of God, do you know that we are all running errands? We are all on earth. And child of God, whether you know it or you don't know it, we are fulfilling purpose. We are running errands. As children of God, we are running errands. The will of the Father is that we will run his own errand. The will of the Father is that heaven rejoice over me and you. That's the heart of the Father. Beloved, can we turn our Bibles this morning to Genesis chapter 37. And as I read for us, verse 12 to verse 14. The Bible says, Soon after this, Joseph's brothers went to pasture their father's flocks at Shechem. When they had been gone for some time, Jacob said to Joseph, Your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem. Get ready, and I will send you to them. I'm ready to go, Joseph replied. Go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along. Jacob said, Then come back and bring me a report. So Jacob sent him on his way, and Joseph traveled to Shechem, from their home in the valley of Hebron. Beloved, are you not a child of the father? Can you see the relationship between the father and the son? That the father sends the son on an errand and the father is looking, waiting for the response he will get from that precious child. 
child of God, God has sent me and you on an errand. And the father is eagerly waiting for the response that heaven will get from us. The father is waiting for that precious response. The Bible makes us to understand, child of God, that the father told Jacob, who is the father, told Joseph, go and see how your brothers and the flocks are getting along. You see, even the brothers had a bishop and the will of the father is that he wants to hear the feedback of that mission, the feedback of that assignment. Why? Because it's the will of the father that it be well with us. It's the will of the father that we be in health and prosper. It's the will of the father that our soul prospers. That's the heart of the father. And so because of his love, because of his mercies, from time to time, he checks down on us. He wants to hear the report of our errand on earth. The report of our errands on earth. But child of God, let us read further. That same Genesis 37. And I am reading from verse 31 to verse 36. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then the brothers killed a young goat and dipped Joseph's robe in his blood. They sent the beautiful robe to their father with this message. Look at what we found. Doesn't this robe belong to your son? The father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it's my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in bola and mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family and all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son, he would say, and then he would weep. Beloved, the father was looking forward to the response he will get from his children. Our father is looking forward so eagerly for the response that our lives on earth bring to him. But beloved child of God, do you know that as children of God, heaven is receiving all manner of response from us. Do you know the kind of response the brothers of Joseph sent to the father? Beloved child of God, that is the kind of response that some of our lives is sending to heaven on daily basis. That some of our lives is sending to heaven on daily basis. What did the sons do? The sons were to take care of the sheep. But right from that sheep, they killed one and used the blood to tell a lie. Can you see the kind of response that as children of God, we send back to the father. Some of us, we are destroying the sheep. Some of us, the precious vision, the precious robe that belongs to the father that he has given. What are we doing to it? We are dipping it in filth. We are dipping our lives in filth. Beloved, is that all? Wild animals eating some of us. The world is eating some of us. Our vision, our assignment, we have left it to the wild animal to tear it off. The errands that God has sent us on earth is being defiled and beloved. What is the heart of the father? Some of us, the same son he sent to us. We have watered down the standard of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. What report did they send to the father? A wild animal has even eaten your son. Can you see the heart of the father? He's weeping, he's groaning, he's mourning. Over the lives of some of us as children of God, child of God, that is not the will of the Father. That is not the will of the Father. The will of the Father is that me and you prospers. The will of the Father is that all goes well for us. Child of God, remember that the father of Jake, the father of Joseph, sent him on an errand. How did Joseph end on that errand? Beloved, let us go further to Genesis chapter 41. I am reading from verse 41 
to verse 44. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and placed it on Joseph's finger. He dressed him in fine linen clothing and hung a gold chain around his neck. Then he had said, then he had, then he had Joseph ride on the chariots reserved for his second in command. And wherever Joseph went, the command was shouted, kneel down. So Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all Egypt. And Pharaoh said to him, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or foot in the entire land of Egypt without your approval. Beloved, God created man, created us in his image and in his likeness, put us in the garden of Eden for us to have dominion. That's the heart of the father. And so when the father sent Joseph on Aaron and Joseph went according to the will of the father, beloved child of God, Joseph entered in dominion, entered in authority over the land of Egypt. A complete power and authority, dominion as God intended for me and you to have. Joseph exhibited it there in Egypt. The father has sent many of us. In fact, sent all of us as his children on Aaron. But the father is receiving different reward, response from us. Some of us, our lives are like Joseph. Bringing joy to the heart of the father. Because through the storm, through the rain, through the thick and through the thin, child of God, some of us like Joseph, we are fulfilling the errands of God. Exhibiting his dominion and his authority on earth, the father is pleased. Yet some of us with errands are so distracted from the call of God upon our lives. And beloved child of God, it grieves the heart of the father. It grieves the heart of the father. Why? The father sends us on errand. Once again, turn your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 17 to verse 20. The Bible says, One day Jesse said to David, Take this basket of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread and carry them quickly to your brothers and give these ten cuts of cheese to their captain. See how your brothers are getting along and bring back a report on how they are doing. David's brothers were with Saul and the Israelites' armies at the valley of Elah fighting against the Philistines. So David left the ship with another shepherd and set out early the next morning with the gifts as Jesse has directed him. He arrived at the camp just as the Israelites' army was leaving for the battlefield with shouts of battle cries. Do you see it again? The father always sends us on errand. The father always sends us on errands. The father of David called him child of God on this glorious day and sent him on an errand just the same way the father sent Joseph on an errand. The same way the father sends me and you on errands, he sent his son David on an errand. And do you know what again? The father said, bring back a report how they are doing. Do you see? Heaven is waiting for res response from earth on how the children of God are faring on the errands of God. Are faring on the errands of God. Many of us, beloved child of God, are not conscious of the fact that we are on earth to run God's errand. Look at what happens there, happened here. The other brothers of David, they were also child of God running the father's errands. The captain running the father's errand. But beloved, let's go further and see something in verse 28. The Bible says, but when David's oldest brother, Eliab, had David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here anyway? He demanded. What about these few sheep you are supposed to be taking care of? I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. Some of us are like a liar. 
so distracted from our core. We have left our lane. Trying to what? Address something that is not our core. David was on his assignment. The elder brother had his own, but he was so distracted from his own. And what was he doing? Misinterpreting another man's own. Beloved child of God. Distraction. Distraction. Eliab didn't even know that the father is waiting for response from him. Everything he was saying concerning David is contrary to what the father says concerning David. He has left his own lane. He has left his own lane. And so, child of God, how many of us are really in the will of the father? How many of us are really doing what God has called us to do? How many sons did David's father have? How many sons did he have? They were all on the assignment. But when the oil came to the house of Jesse, it could only find one man. It could only find one boy out of all his brothers. Beloved, what about Jacob's children? Twelve children. But the glorious end was just of one that we hear so much about. We are all children of the living God. So many of us. But what kind of response is heaven receiving over our lives? What kind of response? Beloved, look at the end of David. Look at the testimony of David. The one that the father sent on Aaron that was focused and delivered on the assignment. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 17. And I am reading from verse 7 to verse 8. This is the word of the Lord. He said, now go say to my servant David, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies have declared. I took you from tending sheep in the pasture and selected you to be the leader of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I have destroyed all your enemies before your eyes. Now I will make your name as famous as anyone who has ever lived on earth. Child of God. When he sent Joseph and Joseph delivered on the assignment, Joseph ended in glory and in honor. He also sent David, focused, delivered on the assignment, child of God. God gave him dominion and authority. The perfect will of God was done over his life. Heaven rejoiced over that life. Child of God, what respond is the father getting from our lives? What response is the father getting from our lives? Because child of God, we are all on earth running errands. But the question is, are we running in obedience or are we running in disobedience? The journey of a glorious destiny starts from us running the errands of God according to his perfect will. And beloved, do you know what? We can understand how our end is based on the life we are living. Whether we are living in obedience or we are living in disobedience. Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. As we read from verse 18 to verse 30, please. Matthew 25, the verse 18 to 30. But he that received one went and dig in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with him. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Twenty one. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent 
came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, weeping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not sown, strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou that is thine. 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou utterest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten talents. For unto every one that has shall be given, and he shall and he shall have abundance, but from him that had not shall be taken away even that which he had. Thirty. And cast ye this unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Beloved child of God, do you know that everyone that the Father gave talent to in this parable came to the Father and gave the report of everything by themselves? The Bible says, he said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest. I have earned five more. The one with two came and said, you gave me two bags of silver to invest. I have earned two more. Child of God, the one that was given one. He too, he came before the Lord. The Bible says in verse 24, then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I know you are a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it on the earth. Look, here is your money back. All the servants we talk before God, presenting a full account on how they ran the errands with the talent of the father, with the talent of the master and child of God. What they said about what they did with the talent, beloved, was what judged them. Was what judged them. The servants were not ignorant. They knew they had an assignment. They knew that the investment of God is upon their lives. They knew they were supposed to do something with it. And they each all came to talk based on what they did with that talent. Beloved child of God, do you know that as children of God, we all have basic knowledge of what God expects from us. We have the basic knowledge. We have a summary of who our God is. Beloved, we know that we didn't create ourselves. We know that we are not empty. There is something that God has put in our hands. Child of God. But many of us, we are careless about this matter. We are careless about the matters of the errands of God. We are careless about the, the, era, the matter of God's instructions, God's commands, God's directions in our lives. Many of us have this, it doesn't matter mentality. God understands. I feel all right, Christianity. All is well, even when it is not well. Child of God, from the message of Matthew chapter 25, we see that it's clear that the end of the careless servant was terrible. The end of a careless servant was terrible. Child of God, what kind of children are we? What kind of children are we as children of the living God? Beloved, check yourself this morning. What category do you belong to? Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. Please read for us from verse 28 to verse 32, please. Matthew 21, the verse 28 to 32. And what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. Whither of them twined did the will of his father? They said unto him the first. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, 
that the publicans and the hallows go into the kingdom of God before thee. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the hallows believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not after, afterward, that ye might believe him. Amen. Amen. Child of God, which one of these songs are you? Which one of these songs am I? The Bible makes us to understand that the father has two sons. This describes the two categories of God's children that we are. We are. But these two, there's something peculiar with all of us. The father has sent the two on assignment. The father has sent all of us on errands. The father has sent all of us on errands. Some of us are going. Some of us are not going. Some of us are repenting after we realize that we have gone contrary to the will of the Father and we are repositioning ourselves. Some of us don't care. Some of us are saying, yes, I am doing it. Meanwhile, we are not doing it. Child of God, what we do with the errands of the Father will determine what the kingdom of God will do with us. Will determine what the kingdom of God will do with us. The will of the Father is what? That we obey the Father. Jesus said, which of these sons obeyed his Father? Which of us are obeying the Father? That's the question that heaven has for us. That's the question that heaven has for us. Child of God, God will never reward disobedience with glory and honor. God will never reward disobedience with glory and honor. God will reward obedience with glory and honor. God will reward obedience with glory and honor. God will not reward disobedience with glory and honor. Child of God, let's learn something this morning from Genesis chapter 2. Beloved child of God, listen very attentively. Genesis chapter 2, verse 19 to verse 20, please. Genesis chapter 2, the verse 19. To 20. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle of the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help made for him. 21 and the lord god praise the lord the praise the lord 19 to 20 please okay. blessed be the name of the lord child of god god will never reward disobedience with obedience with 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 honor and with favor god will never reward disobedience no matter how close we are to the father adam was very very close to god the Bible makes us to understand in Genesis chapter 2 from verse 19 that, that, that God brought the animals to Adam and asked Adam to name the animal. That is how close God and, and Adam were. Adam named all the animals including the birds that fly in the air. The father brought them to Adam. They were so close. A child of God. When disobedience came in, when Adam walked contrary to the will of the Father, when Adam broke the covenant, despite the fact that he was close to the Father, child of God, Genesis chapter 3, and I read from verse 23 to verse 24. This is the word of the Lord. The Bible says, So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After sending them out, the Lord stationed mighty cherubim to the east of the Garden of Eden. And he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Child of God, God will never reward disobedience with honor, glory, and favor. Honor, glory, favor is a reward of obedience, child of God. Let's learn something from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Because there is a standard. And Jesus has made that standard very, very plain. And very clear to us as children of the living God. Beloved, do you know the standard? John chapter 6 and verse 38 says something. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God. Who sent me not to do my own will. That is John chapter 6 and verse 38. Once again, it says, For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God. Who sent me not to do my own will. That's the standard. That's the standard that Jesus has made clear to us. That's the standard that God has made clear to us. That we are on earth to do the will of God, not our own will. Beloved child of God, why did God send Adam out of the garden? Do you know why God sent Adam out? Let us see it in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17. And to the man, he said, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life will be struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thongs and thistles for you, though you ate of its grain. By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground, which from which you, you were made, child of God, God said to man, since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. That's what drove Adam from the garden. He listened to man and despised what God said. Jesus made it very clear that he that is God came down from heaven to do the will of God. Adam also came from God. Instead of doing the will of God, he did the will of man. And as long as he did that, no matter how close he was to God, he was driven out of the garden. Child of God, whose will are we doing? Who are we listening to? Beloved, who are we listening to? It is good for us to learn a lesson about God this morning. It is good for us to learn a lesson about God this morning. Because child of God, who we listen to and who we obey, defines who we will be at the end of the day. It defines where we will spend eternity, child of God. Jesus made it clear that he came to do the will of the Father, not his own will. It's the same call for me and you. When Adam despised the will of God over his life, he broke the covenant. When we despise the will of God over our lives, child of God, we are breaking the covenant. We are breaking the covenant. It is the will of the Father that we will do the will of God. That we will run the errands of God. Child of God, let us learn this lesson about God. God is a very detailed and a very specific God. Let's see it in Genesis chapter 6. Please read for us from verse 14 to verse 16, then verse 22, please. Genesis 6, the verse 14 to 16. Make thee an ark of copper wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubic shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. 22. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Child of God, our Father is very, very specific. Our Father knows what he wants. When the master came to Noah and asked Noah to build an ark, do you know what happened? He gave him specific instructions. He gave him the measurement. He gave him how he wanted it to be. He didn't allow Noah to build it as it is in his heart. No, he, he had Noah do it according to the will of God not according to his will. Because God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has an agenda. 
He told Noah, look, I'm about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy everything that breathes. Whatever, where everything on earth will die. That means that God has a plan. God has an agenda in his heart. God has his dream. God has his purpose. There's something that's specific that God wants to achieve. And so he comes and he gives us specific detailed instructions why he wants to achieve his purpose. It's not about our will. We need to know that God is a very detailed God. Our God is not a careless God. Do you know what happened after Noah did as God instructed, the Bible says, so Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Do you know what happened? The Bible says, very clear to us, in Genesis chapter 7, and I am reading verse 16, and male, a male and female of each kind, entered just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind him. Do you see? The Lord came and closed the door behind Noah because Noah did everything as God commanded him. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. He finished it all by himself. He started the vision, agreed with Noah. Noah agreed with him. Noah did it exactly. The master came and put his seal by closing the door. The seal of his approval. The master came and closed the door. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. His will is that we should follow him according to his perfect will. That's the heart of the father. That's the will of the father that we follow according to the perfect will of God. Child of God. God is very specific. See him again in Revelation chapter 1. And I read from verse 8. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. I am the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come. The Almighty One, that is who he is. Child of God. Do you see his introduction about himself? That he is the one to Alpha it, he is the one to Omega it. He is the one to start it, he is the one to finish it. Child of God. He says, he is the Lord God, the Almighty One. He is the one who is, who always was, and who is still to come. Let's read further. Revelation chapter 1. And I am reading from verse 9 to verse 11. I, John, I am your brother and your partner in suffering and in God's kingdom and in the patience and endurance to which Christ Jesus calls us. I was exiled to the island of Patmos for preaching the word of God and for my testimony about Jesus. It was the Lord's day and I was worshiping in the spirit. Suddenly, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. Behind, it said, write in a book everything you see and send it to the seven churches in the cities of Ephesus. Simna, Pagmum, Tytira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, child of God. The Lord came to John and gave him a very clear instruction. What was the instruction? The Bible says in verse 11, he said, write in a book everything you see. Everything you see, specific instructions. When he comes to give us errands, he wants us to do things according to his will. When the father sent David, the father didn't just say go. The father gave him specific instructions with the bread he gave him. Specific instructions with the cheese he gave him. When the father sent Joseph, specific instructions, child of God. Do we know the specific instructions that God has given us as children of God? Child of God, our God is a very specific God. He told John, write exactly everything you see. Not what you want to see. Beloved, what happened in the life of John? Let me read from verse 12. It says, when I turned to see who was speaking to me, 
I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstand was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand. And a sharp two-edged sword came out of his mouth. And his face was like the sun in all its brilliance. What was John doing? John was reporting exactly as he saw. Exactly as he saw. He began to describe everything he saw. Following the instructions of the Lord. After God spoke to him. The Bible says it was the Lord's day. Child of God, whose day is it in our lives? Is it our own day or is it the Lord's day? It was the Lord's day. The voice of the Lord came and said, John, report specifically everything you see. And what did John do there? When he turned, he wrote down everything he saw. Not what he wanted. Described what he saw. Spoke about the voice, spoke about the face, spoke about the hair, spoke about everything, the lampstand, detailed instructions. John built and obeyed completely. He obeyed completely. Child of God, if Jesus, who is equal with God, did not do his own will, but the Father's will, how do we think we can escape when we disobey the will of God? How are we going to escape? Disobeying the will of God, child of God, please let us listen to God's clear instructions to us as we listen to his word in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Please read for us verse 1 to verse 5, please. 2 Timothy chapter 4, the verse 1 to 5. I charge thee therefore before God, the Lord, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word the instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exalt with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears for and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into unto fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of all thy ministry thank you blessed be the name of the lord child of god let us be reminded clearly of god's instructions to me and you again beloved he says i solemnly urge you in the presence of god and christ jesus who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. Child of God, God will come, Jesus will come and he will judge the living and the dead. God will judge me, God will judge you. As he comes to set up his kingdom, child of God, it is for those that we do the will of the Father. It is for those in the will of the Father. He will judge our obedience. He will judge our disobedience. Child of God, let it be clear to us that whether the situation is favorable or unfavorable, we are called to do the will of the Father. We are called to do the will of the Father. Whether the situation is favorable, whether the situation is unfavorable, we are called to do the will of the Father. That is why we have the Holy Spirit, the helper to help us to achieve the will of God on earth. Child of God, let us be warned. Because we are in that time that verse 3 describes. It says, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their eating ears wants to hear. Child of God, the time for that has finally come. The time for, of this has, is being fulfilled in our time. 
People are no longer interested in sound and wholesome messages. Child of God, people are looking for teachers that will tell them the kind of message they want to hear. That's the time that we are in, child of God. Itchy ears. We are in an era whereby people hate the truth. Children of God hate the truth and prefer teachers who will tell them what their itchy ears wants to hear. Child of God, that's the era that we are in. Beloved, that's the reason why today's Christianity, children of God are choosing churches based on the kind of messages they want to hear. Child of God, we are choosing churches based on the kind of message we want to hear. That's why somebody will say, no, I prefer that, that church because they preach prosperity there. No, I don't like this one because all they are preaching is holiness, holiness. Child of God. That's the reason why you find Christians say, no, that church is full of old people. I prefer where the young ones are so that we can bubble in the Lord. Oh, no, I don't like that one. The message is too long. It's too hard. I prefer this place whereby we just sing and we just dance. Beloved, we are in that era whereby children of God are choosing churches based on status, based on kinds of messages that the ear wants to hear, based on the standard of the world, based on doctrines, based on activities. Beloved, let's be warned. The Bible says in verse 4, they will reject the truth and chase after myths. They will reject the truth. That's the era that we are in. That's the era that we are in. The Bible said they will reject. It's a personal decision. To reject, they made their personal de decision to choose death over life. They will reject. That means God has project god has given life god has given something but his people have rejected it child of god these rejectors are not unbelievers he's in the church he's in the church he's within us as children of god beloved are we rejecting the truth are we picking what we want child of god the bible says very clear to us that they will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Walk at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Did you hear the word of God? That we are, to, we are called to fully, not partially, carry out the ministry that God has given us. And so today, child of God, what is the condition of the errands that God has sent you? What is the condition of the errands that God has also sent me? Are we fully carrying out the ministry that he has put in our, war, in our hands according to his perfect will? How are we running the errands of God, child of God? Let us remember that Noah built according to specification. Let us remember that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary according to God's specification. Child of God, God never sends us without expecting a feedback. At the end of our journey on earth, what feedback will we present before our master? What feedback are we going to give to our Lord and our Savior? Beloved child of God, in closing, this is the word of God to me and you. I am reading Revelations chapter 22 from verse 12 to verse 13. He said, look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to, reward, to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Child of God, I repeat it again according to the word of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Revelations chapter 22 from verse 12 to verse 13. He said, look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Child of God, 
He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. May the Lord strengthen us to agree with the Alpha and with the Omega. So that what he has alphaed in our life, he will come and Omega it at the end. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Give him all the glory this morning. Give him all the honor. Give him all the adoration. Worship his mind. Father, give me the grace to run your errands according to your specification. Give me the grace to run my errands according to your perfect will.